We're just on this Finn Russell thing. We've had a tweet come in from Tan MacArthur asking whether or not the SRU and Town Z have uh, managed this badly. What is your thoughts um, on this whole situation and on, on how it's been handled? Oh, well, it's messy. And I'm also very split. So I do a column for The Times, uh, Mark Palmer, who broke the story. And, it's a, and it is a, it's, it's a breaking story. And also a good friend, Greg Watson, who took the picture as well. Um, I think the two and two together just the picture, you know, and, and this is you you want to sell papers and the article is brilliant. I'm talking from Finn's point of view. He sat a little bit smug on the sofa. I just don't know. I just don't think it's a good thing for Finn. That's what I think. Read, reading between the lines, do you think that Finn's come out and he? I know he's saying he's he wants to give his position and talk through why they are where they are, but do mm. you feel that this goes a bit further and without Finn saying it, he's basically trying to push for a case for I'm only coming back if Greg is gone. Because it, it, the rhetoric in there, the things he's saying is you know, they haven't had a relationship. They've worked together for eight years, they haven't got a relationship. They, he doesn't know him, mm. doesn't trust him. Mm. You know, He's basically, is he not as a very senior player, one of the most important players in this Scotland group, saying... Read him between the lines. I ain't coming back till he's gone. That's exactly what it is. And a lot of people have been saying on social media that you know Finn needs to stay in line. So if you know, so whatever the narrative was around him drinking on the Sunday night, whether he had two, three, four, five, or whatever, whatever it was, and the senior players decided that two drinks was the maximum, that isn't. This isn't the point here. That that part of it is probably masking actually what's beneath that. That him and Gregor. Just don't see eye to eye. Now, I'm not in the camp. I've worked with Gregor before. Um, Scotland need to be a team that there are no grey areas. Finn is a world-class player in that team. He is arguably the best player in the team. So if he's on one agenda and the team have decided that this is the way they're going to do it on a separate way and Finn's doing his own thing because he's pissed off at Gregor, it's not healthy, is it? And that's clearly what's happening. Now, this isn't, for me... I'm not defending Gregor. I'm not defending Finn. All I'm saying is, is that this is unheard of in rugby, is it not? I don't know. I'm looking at it. I'm like, your best player. I can't think of any team anywhere apart from 2015 World Cup, Scotland to the, Scotland, um, sorry. I can't think of any team anywhere ever apart from 2015 World Cup, Vern Cotter, Jim Hamilton, where there's been an issue between coach and player. It looks unresolvable now. Well, look, a coach always wins. Um, until he gets the sack. That's the way it happens. And there's a few things you said there about team uh, and that team ethos. You need individuals and you need individuals to be able to be comfortable in a team environment. Mm. But from reading between the lines, what Finn said is the senior players had a meeting and agreed to only two beers. I'm going to put this to you, Jim. Would, Would you have been happy with just two beers? I mean, two beers, you might as well say no beers. If I was vice captain, mate, so I probably would have made up the rules. So it wouldn't have been that. <laughs> but then he, he's also come out and said, well, they agreed that before he got there and he's part of the senior leaders group. So you, you just don't know what But surely agree. you're not going to lose your place in a team when you're that good arguing over if you're allowed two, two beers or six beers. Like, this isn't the thing. This is the part of it that's actually masking over what the problem is. That's my point. So that, mm. that that bit's been made a deal of, as in, oh, Finn's come up on a Sunday, we've agreed to two drinks, he's had six, he's had ten. That isn't the point. The point is him and Gregor do not see eye yeah, to no, eye. No. And, and if you if you read what Finn says, the relationship that he has with Lauren Traves and um, the Racing 92 coaches, that it, it, as a ten, and you know, you, mate, you, can ha- you have a massive input. And I'll go back to Farrell at Saris. He's in Dubai, I'm up at Newcastle away. He come back to training after we lose the game. He's like, ain't good. this ain't good enough. And I'm thinking, oh, you, mate, you've just been on holiday. But what Owen Farrell wanted was the best for the team. This ain't good enough. Got to get better. Yeah. Get the ball at Jim's head. <laughs> oh, drop him. <laughs> um, so the number 10, and, and this is what I mean. So Mark McCall's there at training as Kev Sorrell, as Joe Shaw, and Farrell's telling them as well because he understands the game just as much, if not more, than... The coaches that are coaching him. And Finn Russell's the same. So really, he's in Paris and he's doing... Um, he's in Paris and he's working with some of the best players in the world and arguably some of the best coaches in the world. 
and he says, oh, I've got a vision of how to play the game. I think this, this, and this. You know, we should kick after two or three phases. You know, that kick, kick should be a cross field. It should be an up and under. It should be a grubber. You can bang it off your heel and put it over your head. And he's, I don't, from what I'm seeing, is I don't think he gets that leeway or, or even has that platform to say them things. Yeah, I mean, that's what you're coming out saying now. And I'm sure there has been debates between the two of them on how they should play. That The big one was at Twickenham last year, wasn't it? Supposedly in the January mm. room. But ultimately, whatever you think as a player, while that head coach that you're continually disagreeing with is in charge, he's the one that's in charge. So, you know, I know Finn's taken the decision to not train with the team when he was told, well, you won't be playing against Ireland. And he's taken himself out of the equation. But ultimately, Greg has made the decision to not pick him against Ireland, which has led to where we are now, the bit of a standoff. And, you know, like you've said before, there's there's more to it than just Gregor and Finn and disagreeing with how the game should be played, how a coach treats a player, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, the, the, the whole thing about his dad mm. uh, being sacked by the SRU and, and then challenging that and winning the case. Um, and Finn says it in his interview, doesn't he? He says it's difficult for some of the other players to speak up because they're contracted to the SRU. So it, you, you don't bite your nose off to spite your face. If you're contracted to the SRU, and you, you try and say something, when you get shut down, at, at some point, as a player, and I've been there loads of times, you're trying to make a point, you're trying to say something you believe in, you get shut down, you get shut down, and then you've got to know that hey, I ain't getting anywhere, so what's the point? And that's the hard thing. Whereas Finn just wants to, obviously because he's not contracted to the SIU, he can say, he feels he can say what he wants. And I think he perhaps doesn't get the backing, or thinks he doesn't get the backing of some of the other players. Because they are contracted. Yes, and, and what he's saying is they're yes men. That's, yeah. and, and that's a difficult thing. That There's is, always going to be yes men. Of course. And, that, and that, you know, and the question is, I don't know whether you're asking that question, is should he have done an article? Because it's a great article. The fact that the Times have got that article and, you know, you, the, the, the picture in there is portraying Finn being Finn. That's how, that's how he would say it. You know, you saw the picture of, of him on social media after the game. Um, the week after, he's not in the squad anymore. It's just for me as a Scotland fan and desperate for Finn as a young man to come back into the team and to perform how he has performed. Um, we need him. We need him and we need Adam Hastings. And But for me, by him doing that article, is that going to make things any better for, for Sc him playing for Scotland? No Absolutely chance. not. Absolutely not. Will it make Finn feel better? It might do in the short term. And I've been, look, I've been there. I know we joke about it. I've been there with, with Vern and after the 2015 World Cup and I didn't end up playing for Scotland ever again. Would that have been different if Richard Cockrell then came in as coach and said, mate, I want you to play after I retired from the World Cup? Yeah. So I've done something really. I've retired from international rugby because I'm annoyed mm. at the situation rather than me being necessarily ready to retire from international rugby. And yeah. Finn's the same. He, he wants to play for Scotland is my point. So he wants to play, but he's not adhering to the culture and what's been set out because he feels strongly about his situation and his standing in there with Gregor and the fact that the way things have been run over the last couple of years, he doesn't like. This whole drinking thing, this hasn't, in my opinion, got anything to do with the glaringly obvious facts that him and Gregor have got an issue. That's what I think. And the other point on it, is if it was only two beers, why didn't he go to two Guinness after? You've got to think ahead of the game board. Mm. Guinness clear. Mm. 